Good morning, we're at Smith Rock in Central Oregon and today I'm going to be using a tilt and shift lens to stitch together several images into one wide angle panorama without the distortion. Okay, what I've got here is I've got my Canon 5D Mark III and the Canon 24mm uh, tilt and shift lens. And you can see that my camera is mounted on my tripod vertically. And what this is going to allow me to do is shoot a, um, a series of three or four images stacked and uh, we'll be able to stitch those together with Photoshop uh, into a panorama that has the effective uh, width of about a 16 millimeter lens without any of the distortion and uh, it'll be taller uh, so it's not a real uh, 4 by 3 normal aspect ratio of a photo it's closer to a square shape um, but I, I find them really pleasing uh, to look at what I really like about this lens, um, aside from its tilt and shift functions, which I'm going to tell you about in a second, is the front element is massive. And this is what allows you to do um, what we're going to be doing today. Uh, if you take a normal lens uh, on a camera like the 5D Mark III, the corners of the frame are going to be uh, right at the corners of the edges of the glass of the lens. So if you were to draw a rectangle on the front of a normal lens element, um, the way they're designed is the corners of the frame are close to the edges of the glass element. Uh, with this lens, it's oversized, and that allows you to shift the lens around and uh, use um, the glass in different ways. And it helps manipulate uh, your imagery. You can tilt and affect the uh, angle of the focal plane. Uh, you can, people do that a lot to create uh, miniature effects and things like that. Uh, but what I really enjoy with this lens is the shift function, and that allows you to shift the uh, barrel of the lens. Um, in this case, since I've got my camera mounted vertically, uh, it's horizontally, but you can rotate the whole apparatus and shift it however you'd like. Um, so what I'm doing here at Smith Rock is I've got a um, beautiful vista here. We're overlooking the Crooked River, and... I'm on this bluff and I want to get some foreground of the bluff and there's a trail that leads down to the river here and then I've got these beautiful tall rocks in the background. Um, with a normal wide angle lens like a 17 millimeter lens I can get the foreground and get the rocks and things in there but there's some distortion and uh, uh, some quality issues when you're using a, a you know, the, the whole of the glass for one shot. And so what I'm going to do is uh, use this lens to uh, recreate the width of that wide-angle lens but there's not going to be any distortion because I'm only using portions of the glass element instead of the whole thing. I hope that makes sense. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll frame up my shot and I'll place uh, the lens in its far right shifted position. So you can see here I've shifted the lens using this little knob all the way to the right and I use live view and I go ahead and line up so that I have the right side of my frame where I want it to be for the final image. And then I'll take that shot and then I'll dial the shift function of the lens to the center. There's a little bump that helps you know where you're in center. And take another shot, dead center, and then shift on over to the left. Kind of time consuming. Shift it over to the left and now I've got, you know, the far left edge of my frame, take another shot. So with three images with some slight overlap, I put them into Photoshop, merge them into a panorama, and I end up with a massive file. I've got uh, three full frames that I'm incorporating into one file. So I get a really high quality, very little distortion, and um, I get the wide angle view that I want, but I also have a nice um, uh, wide angle vertically as well. So let's go back to the computer and put them all together and see what we got. Okay, here we are in Lightroom 5. I have imported my photos from my trip to Smith Rock and I've thawed out my fingers and toes from the uh, cold morning there. And I wanted to uh, merge those images together into a panorama for you, but before I do, I want to answer a simple question, and that is, why bother? Why go out and buy a big, heavy, expensive tilt and shift lens when you probably already have a wide angle lens that'll do the job. Now this is a question my wife would ask. Uh, why do you need another lens? Well, <laughs> the, the short answer is the tilt and shift lens is going to give me an image with a lot more resolution, with a lot more pixels, 
because I'm combining multiple frames um, and each frame is shot at full resolution so you you get uh, quite a bit more pixels in the final composite the final um, panorama um, but as you can see here I've got this shot up on the the screen this is shot with my 17 to 40 um, f4 L lens the Canon uh, little wide zoom lens that I just love it's a great little lens but it does um, it does have some problems. It's got some some quality issues, especially in the corners, and that's the main reason why I really like the tilt and shift lens is because I can get really sharp detail, edge to edge, corner to corner in the frame um, by overlapping those multiple exposures. So let's let's go ahead and go into the develop module and take a look at this. You'll see right now the the picture looks great, and I've got. Uh, profile corrections clicked uh, selected here in the uh, lens corrections part of the develop module now what lens corrections does for this particular lens is it removes vignetting in the corners vignetting is caused by the um, it's actually darkening in the corners that's caused by the uh, refraction of the of the light through the glass and when you get towards the edges of a lens element in your lens um, the lower the quality because the glass is thinner and uh, at more of an angle to the front and the back part of the lens element. Getting into the optical trickery is, is just going to make your head explode so let me <laughs> narrow it down to this. The closer you get to the edges of your frame the lower the quality. The center is usually the best spot so uh, it's the sweet spot and if I click in and zoom in 100% it looks nice and sharp in this image but if I go down here in the right corner and take a look you'll see that uh, it's a bit soft as soon as Lightroom brings up the resolution here. You'll see that it's a bit soft in the corners and the the reason for this again is it's it's the physics of the light passing through the glass and at this level if I was just gonna throw this photo on Flickr or Facebook um, it doesn't matter. Um, it's not gonna be apparent to anyone that the corners are soft. It's pixel peeping, right? <laughs> it gets a little crazy. But if I were to make a huge print, let's say I wanted to make a 60 inch wide uh, metallic print, then it was going to hang on the wall and people would be able to walk up to it and scrutinize every uh, little piece of it. I would like the corners to be sharp. So that's where I really enjoy the tilt and shift lens. So um, here, you know, Lightroom does a great job of you know removing vignetting it also does a good job of removing the distortion that's caused by a wide-angle lens and sometimes I like that distortion that fisheye kind of bulge that you get uh, take a look at this if I unclick this box it's gonna reapply uh, the distortion that the lens gave so this is this is the view as shot um, I click the box again Lightroom is gonna go ahead and remove the vignetting and remove the barrel distortion caused by the uh, 17 millimeter lens so there there it goes. It's pretty subtle. Um, is most people aren't going to notice the difference, but if you had um, more noticeable objects on the edge of your frame, like people or trees, straight lines especially, they're going to have a, a bend to them. They're going to have a bow to them because of the uh, again the optics of the glass in the lens. So, um, short answer <laughs> to this question: Why bother? Um, I want to avoid the distortion and the quality loss and the edges of my photo and I can overcome a little bit of it in Lightroom but not enough um, so I prefer to use the tilt and shift lens so there you go um, if you don't have a tilt and shift lens and you don't think this stuff is important don't go out and buy a tilt and shift lens please um, you'll just have leave it in your bag it'll uh, be a big waste of money so if you want that critical sharpness in the corners by all means go grab a tilt and shift here we go. So that's the 17 uh, millimeter shot. Now we're going to go back and look at the three frames that I made um, using my camera set up on the tripod vertically. And um, you can see here it covers almost exactly the same uh, field of view as the 17 millimeter did. There's that tree down the bottom left hand corner. And there's that dry sagebrush down on the right hand corner. But you'll notice that there's a little bit more sky and a little bit more down at the bottom of the frames and that is because um, my camera was tilted you know turned vertically and so these shots are aligned vertically I get a nice wide um, perspective and by stacking these three side by side and then merging them we're going to have um, the effective width of the 17 millimeter lens but we're going to get a little bit more 
of a taller image than we would have if we just kept the original 17 millimeter framing. So, got these three shots. I went ahead in Lightroom and toned them. Uh, did some color correction, did some sharpening, the usual stuff that you do with a landscape image uh, that was shot in RAW. You're going to boost up your vibrance, you're going to adjust any color cast that might be there, um, and basically make these images look as good as you can before you merge them. Now, you're working with multiple images, so you're going to want to make sure that you do the same corrections to all three shots. And the best way to do that in Lightroom is when you're in the develop module, you have all three images selected, you do all your work on just one of the frames, and then you go down and click the sync button down at the bottom here. And what that's going to do is it'll um, apply any corrections you did to that one frame to the other frames that you have selected. So you could do this um, across dozens of, of images if you wanted to, but in this case I've just got the three and I went ahead and synchronized them. They all, the toning on all of them looks the same and now it's time to send them on to Photoshop. So we go ahead and right click on them and we go down to edit in mm -hmm. and we could go right here to edit in Adobe Photoshop CC, but what that's going to do is open each of these files in its own window and we could later merge them, but we can make a shortcut here and just go down to merge to panorama in Photoshop, click on that, and that's going to open each of these files as a layer. And then Photoshop is going to analyze all the pixels in the frame and create the panorama automatically. And the first thing that you're going to notice when Photoshop opens up is this photo merge menu. And I want auto selected so that Photoshop analyzes the image and um, stitches them together as best as possible. I make sure that my three photos are selected, uh, not just two of them or other extra images added in there, just the three. And I want to make sure it's blending the images together and I want to make sure that I'm not trying to remove any vignette or geometric distortion because I've already done that. If I was going to do it, I would have done that in Lightroom. Uh, and with the tilt and shift lens, I don't need to worry about either of those things. Clicking on OK and now the uh, computer is going to chew on this data. And this is quite a bit of data. You'll see here uh, my MacBook Pro, which is about a three-year-old computer. It's not the fastest machine out there, but it is maxed out on RAM and it does have a solid state drive. So it's moving pretty good. Um, but these are full resolution, full frame, raw images that uh, each one is pretty substantial in size, about 30 megabytes. So we're going to be crunching some pixels together and then Photoshop as it opens each one it's making sure that uh, the images are good it's reading the the formats from um, Lightroom all the corrections that I did in Lightroom everything is being applied to those raw files and then once all three images are open Photoshop will begin to merge them so it's going to go ahead and align the layers and then analyze the data in the photo to match up features in the photo to merge the three images into one. Pretty amazing. If you remember back uh, several years ago, Photoshop didn't used to be able to do this automatically. You had to do it manually, which um, at the time I thought was a really cool feature that you could merge photos into one, uh, but you'd spend hours um, painstakingly merging them. And here we have Photoshop doing it in just a matter of minutes. So here's our product. We've got the three layers over here on the right. You've got the masks that Photoshop has generated, and if you look at the photo here, you look at the image, it you can't tell. You cannot tell the edge of one frame to the other. Uh, I always take a quick look just to make sure there isn't any, any mistakes, because sometimes Photoshop does misread it, but it looks pretty good. So I'm going to go up here to Layer and Merge Layers, flatten that image down into one, and uh, you could also click on Flatten Image does the same thing. I'm going to merge that image down into one and uh, you'll notice that there is a little bit of white around the border of this and that is because when Photoshop merged these in it shifted a couple of the frames a little bit and there's always a little sliver of white even if you're super careful with your tripod it does this. Now another question might come up at this point you know could you take a lens that's not a tilt and shift lens and um, just pan your uh, camera right and left and take a series of three or four or five shots and then stitch them together in Photoshop. But yeah, you could. Uh, you're going to have what's known as parallax error and that's um, when 
you move your camera right and left, you know, your lens does have distortion and Photoshop does a pretty good job of eliminating that. So when you go to that photo merge menu, you'd want to click on remove geometric distortion and remove vignetting. And Photoshop's going to do a pretty remarkable job of merging those photos into a, a workable uh, panorama. But you got to be careful, um, really be careful that it's not <laughs> that it does it correctly. You'll want to scrutinize the final product and make sure it looks right uh, before you send it out to make a big print because there could be um, you know trees that don't look right or something. You just have to be really careful. But with the tilt and shift lens, because I'm not actually moving the sensor, I'm just shifting the glass of the lens, um, there's none of that distortion. And look at that. It looks like it was shot with a big wide angle uh, lens. So this is uh, done in Photoshop. I'm going to go ahead and send it back to Lightroom just by clicking save. And it's going to send it to Lightroom as a TIFF. And in there I can do, um, I can add a vignette in the corners. I could do a little more um, correction work if I'd like. So we'll just go back to Photoshop and take a look. I'm sorry, back to Lightroom and take a look. And uh, here's the finished product. Now, um, <laughs> the great thing about this if you take a look at it i was mentioning the clarity in the corners let's take a look at the corner now as compared to the 17 millimeter shot with the uh, little wide zoom lens now it's going to take a while for lightroom to open this because it's a lot bigger file than if i just taken a single shot but you'll notice that it's going to be a lot sharper in the corners it's going to be a lot sharper edge to edge and um, there's going to be very little if any softness anywhere in the photo because that lens is just so darn sharp. That front element of that lens is so clear. And as you can see, you know, it's really laboring with this big file. So what I could do with this file now, um, I can go ahead and output it. So there you go. Nice and crisp. You can see all the little twigs, every little speck of lichen on that rock. All of the details along the edges are nice and sharp. Um, really is an amazing, uh, amazing lens and I really like the look of it. You'll notice it's not a normal 4 by 3 aspect ratio so if you've got a mat or a frame that you bought um, this won't fit in it. Uh, if you go and have a print made it's not going to be the same shape as a traditional frame so you'll have to have a custom print and I really like the new uh, metallic prints which is a process where they actually print the photo on metal and uh, it can be any shape and size that you'd like. So this would be a good contender for that process. It would be um, really sharp looking on the wall and metal. So there you have it. Uh, gone ahead and merged three photos into one. Created a beautiful panorama of Smith Rocks in Oregon. And uh, probably do a little bit more color correction work on this and then be ready to send it off to the lab to make a print and uh, or send it off to Flickr or wherever I'd like to use it. I hope that made sense to you. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial here. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments section. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, if you want more information on photography, go ahead and subscribe to my feed. Check out my homepage. It's masonmarsh.com. And uh, stay tuned for more videos in the future. Have a great day. Thanks.